Hey, what's up guys, it's Tom here, and today we'll have a very special guest on the show. Uh, we have a Tony, and he is the co-founder of Vessi, and uh, I call him Kickstarter King because he's got the whole Kickstarter game figured out. So what they do is uh, they launch products on Kickstarter and then turn them into a real e-commerce brand afterwards as well. So essentially using Kickstarter as a launch pad. So welcome to the show today, Tony. Thank you. He Thank said you. last night he went out and uh, got a little, <laughs> Got a little messy, so if yeah. he's uh, derping out on some man's bit slow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, my uh, community of people uh, are obviously Amazon FBA focused, but I think now there's a big push to building that real brand outside of Amazon. But your name has gotten brought up in the Facebook group a few times, uh, just organically through you know people that are interested in doing Kickstarter campaigns. Mm -hmm. So love to love to get you to share kind of your story with Kickstarter, just like literally from, I know that like you went to university and after you're like, I don't want to work a full-time job or something and you created your first product. And then later on, we'll go into the more advanced like Kickstarter, how they do over a million dollars on one campaign and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess in 2013, that's uh, kind of when we first launched our first Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, that's actually when Kickstarter opened up in Canada. So mm. uh, that was the first year that, that we were able to do it. Ran our first Kickstarter with this uh, product called Nanotips. It's a uh, it's a liquid solution that makes any glove touchscreen compatible. Mm -hmm. Just felt like the the easier method to to go about launching a brand new product right. in a completely unknown space. Right. Um, managed to do that uh, with some success. So we did I think seventy two or eighty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars. And then and you had no idea what you were doing. Oh, we had no idea. Yeah. So uh, learned about PR that way. Just started like, yeah, and product really took off. So Nanotips is like this liquid solution that you put on uh, into on gloves, and then once they dry, so you can use it on your phones. Because like, especially if you like, so he was a biker, like motorcyclist, um, and then he had that problem, right? Mm -hmm. You have to like take off your glo a glove every single time. Yeah. So like, my question to you is like, how do? Because you, you didn't have any like formulation background. You're not a chemist. So how did you figure out that, how did you create that product from scratch? Ah, Google. Google. Lots okay. of Googling, yeah. Um, Google, you go down like one, one kind of link hole, mm -hmm. and then you figure out uh, certain formulations that work uh, for, basically I, I reverse engineered how touchscreen phones worked and figure out what chemicals would work best to activate that, that touchscreen function. Mm -hmm. um, started looking up those chemicals and st started finding chemical suppliers. Mm. Gave those guys a call mm. and started talking to the... Oh, the chemists. The chemists, yeah. 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 Help me formulate this new thing, so... Were they like friends of yours, like who are chemists? No, they're not. Um, so like, like through Google, you can find a lot of these relatively unknown companies. Mm -hmm. Pick up the phone, call them, and then um, the guys on the back end, whenever you don't talk to sales, those are the most helpful people. Right, right, right. So, uh, they're the guys that no one pays attention to, mm -hmm. and uh, they just spill all the secrets, so. <laughs> yeah. So, was able to do it that way, uh, formulated something uh, with the help of those guys, and launched a product on Kickstarter. Nice, and um, so, and then you actually went on Dragonson as well, which is like a really shitty version of uh, <laughs> Shark Tank, the yeah. Canadian version of Shark yeah. Tank. Uh, how was that experience? Like, was that, uh, do you feel like you kind of learned a lot about putting deals together, presenting, stuff like that? Ooh, uh, that was a good experience, but it was uh, a lesson to be more prepared, I think. Mm. Uh, just more preparation and like pitching right. is always good. Uh, we ended up with a deal, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think I would have liked to do better on that. Mm. Interesting. And then are you, okay, so, okay, so that was in 2013. And then after, let's talk about PNW, because mm -hmm. I feel like that is a company that you got on Kickstarter, but then you really started scaling outside of Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. So uh, during the Nanotips days, like we were traveling through China, and uh, my girlfriend and I would work on the business together, and we came across this like new type of material, mm -hmm. uh, just a waterproof cordura material, mm -hmm. and a company that was able to actually turn that into a backpack. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're a previous like outdoor, um, outdoor equipment goods manufacturer, 
Uh, and that was, that idea was kind of sitting on our heads for maybe like a year. Mm -hmm. um, then around 2016, we finally decided to launch the product. So, so 2016? Sorry, 2017 actually. Seven, PNW was born in 2017? Yeah, PNW was 2017. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. So we had the idea for like since 2016. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, going back, like uh, from like 2013, 2016, it was all like nano tips and like some other small like e-commerce businesses. We launched like a couple of products on Kickstarter right. um, through the nano tips brand. Right, right. Uh, same sort of formulation, right. but never ran any like Facebook ads, so it was all organic. Mm -hmm. uh, so 2017 came around wanted to do another product um, and yeah, contacted this, this equipment manufacturer, uh, got them to prototype some backpacks for us, mm -hmm. uh, got a really nice video made and then put it on the Kickstarter platform. So uh, I'm gonna include some images and videos of the actual backpack and the video, yes, it's like freaking on point. Um, but a lot of people in my community, right? I'm trying to make everything as most relevant to the viewers, which are mostly Amazon FBA sellers. They want to go ahead and create kind of their own molding or create their own unique product because there's a lot of like, we call them me too products. Right. Just, it's just another product with different branding, but your product, you like developed it, right? There's like certain things that no other, like no one else has. Like you designed the backpack, right? Yeah. So the backpack is, um, there are similar products on the market, but we made changes to the, the product to make it better. Right, so like how do you go about making those changes? Like how does that process work? Uh, really having a, a good manufacturer uh, goes a long way. Yeah, um, sure. So people that know what they're doing, uh, for us it was relatively simple. We just kind of sketched it out on, on paper, uh, what we want changed, what we want to add. Mm -hmm. We took some screenshots from uh, other backpacks or photos from other backpacks, right. include it here, include it there, uh, sent it to them, and then they were able to come up with a, like a, a, a good prototype, yeah. How long did that process take, approximately? Uh, like a three, four months? Or? It was like a three month process. Three month process? Yeah. Interesting, okay. A lot, of, a lot of going back and forth and just like tweaking and refining the product. And how did you find that manufacturer in the first place? Uh, we went to, it's like the CES of what, what's it called? Like Canton Fair. Oh, Canton Fair. Okay. Yeah, we were at Canton Fair in 20, 2016, beginning of 2016. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So I guess let's talk, and how much did, uh, when you launched uh, PNW, yeah. how much did that do? Uh, we did, so we launched in US dollars. Uh, Kickstarter in the US is uh, much better. Yeah. Uh, just because at the time, uh, it displays the, the currency on the, on the reward section. So... If we launched in Canadian, it would seem like a different number, and a lot of people mm. don't back. Majority of uh, demographic on Kickstarter is U.S. based. Right. So how much did you guys do? Uh, we did five hundred and sixty thousand. So around like so in Kickstarter world, like how much would you say is kind of your like take home money? Usually. Uh, it depends on the product. That one we're about fifty percent. Fifty percent. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And is that the first product you guys leverage like Facebook ads? Heavily. Yeah, that was the that was the first okay. that was the first product. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. So let's talk about like Kickstarter because a lot of people are interested. And Tony has done what over how many Kickstarter? Campaigns? We're launching one on Monday, which would be the tenth one. The tenth one, and that includes like helping other people too, right? Yeah, I've helped a couple of friends. Right. Okay. Some products, yeah. So you on so you said to me before that Kickstarter is absolutely like a system. It is. Yeah. So can we talk about that system? Sure. Um, Step number one is find the product, obviously. Right? Yeah, I think if you have a, a unique, I mean, you could have any product as long as you can develop a story behind it mm -hmm. and just figure out the different angle to market it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for Kickstarter, uh, unlike Amazon, where you just grab any product um, and you push it on the market and people just start buying it, um, this has to do a lot more with branding. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, take for example like our, our Vessi shoes right mm -hmm. um, the unique angle is that they're like the first 100% waterproof knit shoes in the world right um, so getting that messaging really clear is super important on Kickstarter but okay let's say you have so you have a product mm -hmm. um, that you want to launch do you, do you have anything in mind or you can just walk through it uh, let's just tell the PNW okay let's um, just use that as a case study sure so the PNW, uh, 
basic process. We have the sample. Um, sample is the most key thing. So sample with your logo. Um, then you go find a videographer. Okay. And you develop your, your messaging. Okay. You develop the entire like brand story behind it. And the videographer goes out, does the, the, the pitch. Basically, the video is the pitch. Right. Um, and it has to like look good. It has to be a high quality production. Yeah. Um, you can make a video for like like from a thousand bucks to to like ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars. Right. Um, just depends on how much you want to work at it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and how long is there like a sweet spot for the length of videos? Because you don't want it to be like fifteen minutes or anything, right? Like what um, is there a Yeah, I think the the best performing range is probably like a minute to well, a minute and a half to like three minutes. Okay. Um, there have been some people that have done like, like very long form videos. Mm -hmm. um, those work as well, but yeah, I think the sweet spot is probably like one and a half to three minutes. Okay. okay. So you get a video done, you get a messenger done, you get a brand story done, the videographer goes out there and kind of formulates everything. That's yeah. The pitch, they have to capture, like the videographer really has to capture the essence of your product, right? right. Um, get some photos done as well to highlight the features. Mm -hmm. So Kickstarter, I guess, is a very feature-driven platform. Right. Um, so you just gotta make sure you can like extract the features from your products and display it to the audience so that it's easy for them to understand like why your product, why is it different, right? Right, right, right. Um, for our backpacks, it was, uh, the main features was, uh, it's a, basically it's a expandable backpack that fits in your pocket uh, and it's also 100% waterproof and extremely lightweight. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess the lifestyle was. But we'll, we'll, we'll include a affiliate down, link down below. <laughs> Save 30% using uh, Tom's coupon code. Right. All the proceeds go to feed my cats. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> um, yeah, just capturing the essence of, like, so we figured out our market demographic for that product was the outdoor space. So, uh, and we knew like, we had to launch a product in the summer at the right. height of uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like summer equipment buying season, right? Right. Yeah. Um, like you don't, you want, you don't want to be launching a, like a winter product in the summer because yeah, totally. no one's in that mindset for buying a sh like a Christmas sh shovel mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Time so how does, how, how does, uh, so, uh, on the actual page itself, I know the first thing you see is a video, yep. right? But then on the bottom, it's like a kind of like a land, like a sales page. Yeah, is that custom? Is that templated or is that customizable or like how does that work? Yeah, it's just um, you just build it yourself. Um, on the Kickstarter platform, um, they give you a section where you can drag and drop images, okay. text, videos, anything you want. Okay. Um, but you build it within the Kickstarter platform. Right. Um, it's relatively standard, like how you'd want to pitch, like from from like. Uh, just you have to like follow the consumer's mindset like like what do they want to know first right maybe yeah. they want to they probably want to see the product first and then they want to see like the the core feature like mm -hmm. like they need that wow moment for us it was um, for that video I think it was the um, the backpack with a bunch of items on the side and they would come out of this small pouch right yeah uh, and then everything would fit inside yeah and it would just like walk out the screen so that was like that was our, our. Is that a GIF, by the way? It's a GIF, yeah, yeah. Um, that was the champion one. Okay. That we used. The other things is like, um, so we just highlight the features like, waterproof, um, and then show like a relevant lifestyle that you can do with it, mm -hmm. and, yeah, that's okay. kind of, how like we've been building on our pages. So how do you? Okay, so that's kind of the, like the 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 pages itself, right? And that's like the video and the features and everything like that. Um, how does the launch process work? Like, how do you, like, obviously you want to get it on page one, I assume, like trending or whatever section. Yeah. So within Kickstarter, there's like a lot of organic traffic mm -hmm. that comes through. Yeah. Um, and those people, they love to, like people on Kickstarter, they just love to buy like new techie things mm -hmm. most of the times. Um, so if you can rank your product, on the top spot for, or get it on like the feature list, then you gonna win a lot of that organic traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's a method to that. So 
so Kickstarter algorithm is, is, I don't exactly know it, but it, it sends the same amount of traffic that lands on your page on day one. Uh, so if we're sending a thousand people or a thousand people are clicking on it, then Kickstarter is going to show it to like that many more people. Huh, okay. Um, day one. Day one. You day one. Day yeah. One. So whenever you launch anything on Kickstarter, within the first like uh, first week, um, Kickstarter favors them better on within their algorithm. Mm. Uh, so it gives you more visibility. Right. Right. Because they want to give you like the benefit of the doubt. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So okay. they want to help a lot of right. products or companies come okay. up. Um, and during that time, you really have to leverage that traffic to get more people into your into your page and, and sell them. Um, so like our launch strategy is drive as much traffic to the, to, to the campaign page mm -hmm. as possible on the first day and then, um, try and stay up on the, on like the trending page of, of Kickstarter. Right. And does like the traffic has to convert as well, or is it just like good traffic? From uh, so yeah, it's part of their whole algorithm. I'm not sure how it is, but it's. Uh, the amount of page views, mm -hmm. I think they take into consideration um, the amount of uh, conversions and the rate of conversions. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the price mm -hmm. of the product, but they favor backer velocity better. So, Back of velocity, um, so if you're getting like a thousand people on the first day or a hundred people on the first day, right. um, they like that more. Right. Uh, and to rank on the top, like within your category. So within Kickstarter, there's like, uh, a lot of different categories like arts and crafts um, popular stuff that we usually launch is like under design okay. uh, like product design mm -hmm. uh, and to rank like trending on product design you just have to have essentially more backer velocity than the other campaigns right right so it's very similar to Amazon in that sense like Amazon is all about generating like sales velocity like and we also have that honeymoon it's called honeymoon phase like first you know, we don't know how long it is. Maybe like Kickstarter, you said a week, but on Amazon, maybe a month-ish. They give you the new product like with no sales history, kind of a little benefit of the doubt. Yeah, yeah. So it's easier for them to get visibility. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that's super interesting. And then, so essentially, I guess it's pretty important to kind of have a pre, like a like building a list pre-hand. Yeah, on P&W's campaign, um, we didn't have a list. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had a really compelling video right um so that was good for that and um so you literally just list the product and the video was so good and it just got like picked up organically yeah i, I think we did some media outreach uh, okay. dur yeah, during the campaign to get some shares okay actually i want to ask you about that because you guys are very good at getting on what are some of the big media places that you guys been on uh pnw and well i will include we'll exclude Vessi because it's kind of a right it's a a, yeah it's but how, for PNW, for example. Okay. Like, um, Mashable, that's one. Yeah, Mashables, I think Engadget, um, TechCrunch, I think. And that's more just like literally emailing someone within the company and just. Yeah, you, you have them. to find, it was easier before, mm -hmm. um, but now if you're a completely brand new product, it's, um, there's certain writers that will still write about it. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to find uh, that writer and and how we did it in the past was you can go through like previous Kickstarter campaigns and uh, right. where it says like oh like featured in right, right. you just go and find their articles mm. uh, what we were doing was we were taking the Kickstarter link we were putting it into like SEM rush for example mm. uh, and then figuring out the backlinks that pointed towards that page oh, smart. and then from that we would click on the links and then go find the writer right. and then just have a giant writer list of people right. who cover Kickstarters. Super interesting. Okay, cool. I always wonder about that. Um, wow, that's really, really smart. Always working backwards, eh? Yeah, you just gotta understand how the process works in that. Right, way. understand how the system works and then, and then uh, do it. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So now we're the, we're the launch phase, right? So we, we launched, we got a list, we got their, their on page one. And yeah, so, so we can go list? through, um, yeah, I can, I can give you like a list of things that you would need to do before uh, campaign launch. So there's like a whole pre-campaign section. Okay. Uh, we usually build everything out on like uh, an Asana task list or something. Okay. So we just like make sure everything's done in there. Okay. Um, 
What are some? You don't have to name yeah, all of them. Like um, some of the key ones. The key ones? Uh, PR outreach, like, beforehand is usually pretty big. So, PR outreach? Yeah. Other Kickstarter campaigns? Uh, PR for your Kickstarter campaign. So oh, like PR, when, okay. Like uh, public relations. Or, okay, okay. I thought it was that peer, like peer. Peer, peer. Oh, yeah. No, PR, yeah. Okay. Um, if you can get people to cover your product on launch day, uh, you're just going to get way more traffic flowing through. Kickstarter likes that and you just rank higher, you get more organic traffic. Uh, so that's really good. Um, you need to build an email list, um, however you want to do it. Uh, whether you do it like on Facebook or through a landing page, just need that right content and then convert them into your, your email list. Mm -hmm. uh, day of launch, or I guess like you'll have a drip sequence for the email leading up to the day of launch, right. uh, just to kind of warm them up. Yeah. And you should do it like a week before. So you have like an intro email, so a welcome to, and then you can do like maybe two more leading up to like two more. So one, which is a reminder, and then on the day of. Mm -hmm. And then if you know anyone on Kickstarter or campaigns that are running, you can get them to like help you post updates and direct that traffic to your page on the day of launch. So anything you can do to basically generate a lot of traffic, right, to, traffic. to your page right. um, will be beneficial, yeah. however you want to do it. But yeah, we, have, we have a list of things that we do. Right, like click farms and <laughs> sort of China click farms, India. Traffic coming from Pakistan. There's some people that do that in China, like in, um, yeah, they, they kind of game the system like that. But yeah. Okay. But then, then the conversion will be really low, like the sales backer. The There's some whatever. people that I think they have a lot of different accounts and they just mm. back really quickly on the first couple of days. And then throughout the campaign, because they've already like got the organic traffic and the sales, um, they unback. How, how much does Kickstarter take? Uh, it's five percent, but um, after like all the fees, uh, it's five percent plus like a three percent Stripe transaction fee. Right. Um, and then you have there's these other services that you kind of need uh, mm -hmm. for for, fulfill, for fulfillment. Yeah. Um, and it can come up to like twelve to thirteen percent. Right, and that's just like shipping though, like fulfillment. That's the cost of just doing business, pretty much. Yeah, plus that, yeah. So right. you would say, like, whatever number you see on, on Kickstarter, so let's say we did a million dollars, right? Yeah. Uh, just knock off 12% off that. Right. Um, and that's, like, services that you have to pay out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's cost of goods and everything on top. Right. Jeff Bezos, if you're watching this right now, paying too much, 30% versus 12%. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So let's talk about, uh, yeah. So, sorry, uh, so pre-launch, drive as much traffic there uh, on the day of lunch. Yeah. You just send them to the actual, uh, is there a special like link? Is there like a soup, like a hack URL that you use? Hack URL? Like we where? use, we use uh, right now we use Snipply. Right. Um, so for all our ads on Facebook, um, we use a Snipply link. Uh, Snipply sends them basically to like a redirect. Mm -hmm. um, so like if you're running ads on Facebook, you can't go back and change the ad without resetting the entire process, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but with Snipply, you can just have the link there, and then when your campaign goes live, you can just switch out the link to whatever you want. Everything's tracked. Mm. So, What does it track exactly? Clicks, obviously. Yeah, it tracks it clicks. clicks. Uh, you can pixel them. Um, oh, you can pixel using Snipply? Yeah, you can pixel using Snipply. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you put like any type of like tracking code in there. Mm. Okay. Um, Cool. And we're in Snipply's office too, by the way. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Um, okay. And then you just kind of, the rest of the campaign usually lasts for what? One month? You can do like 30 days. Uh, we're, we've been doing 60 days. Oh, 60 days. Uh, 45 days is a nice spot to be in as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I assume like the last few days, that's when sales really pick up? Yeah, the last week uh, is usually really good. So first seven days, last seven days and then during the middle you just have to feed it with uh with ads right and try to obviously like, stay on the top ads. yeah profitable stay on the top okay. um yeah so when that's going your emails are going out uh, you get a huge nice spike in sales and then during the campaign what you want to do is um start reaching out to other campaigns uh, at a similar kind of backer level so let's say you have a thousand backers ready um try and reach out to campaigns with that amount of backing or higher and get them to do this thing, we call it like a cross promotion. Within Kickstarter, you can post updates 
um, directly on the Kickstarter platform. And whenever someone posts an update, it goes to their entire backer email list. Mm. And that shows up in your email as a Kickstarter email. So the click through on that is like very, very high. Mm. On top of that, you're already marketing to, you're basically sending to someone else's email list um, that understand how Kickstarter works. Right. So the conversion is going to be a lot better. Right, so right. cross promotions is like very key. Mm. Um, so you try and get like a bunch of cross promotions, but it's basically like you post an update on your page uh, and you like give a shout out to my product and I'll do the same for you. Yeah. Um, Does it have to be kind of like any overlaps at all in terms of the products? Product overlap is better. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So you don't want to be competitors. It. Like you don't, you don't want to be competitors. You don't want to be a competitor. Right. But you want it to have some sort of like outdoor backpack with outdoor something else. Yeah. With like maybe a water bottle, like an yeah. outdoor water bottle okay. or something. Um, okay. But it's less important than having a, like a lot of backers. So if they have 5,000 backers and they're willing to give you a post for that, then, and you only have a thousand, then. Right. Right. It's like, it's like Instagram shout out for shout yeah, out. Yeah. You gotta have, you can be on. There's a new term now. It's called nano influencer. Oh, I've seen that. So like you and I are nano influencers. <laughs> nano influencers. And then there's like the micro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So now the campaign's done. No. Um, so during the campaign, there's a bit of work. So cross promotions is really big. Uh, PR outreach to continue that is also big. Um, it's getting people to share on social. And uh, for what we do, we use uh, marketing agencies. So within Kickstarter. Uh, there's people that like Facebook agencies basically right. that only market for Kickstarter products. Mm -hmm. um, and they do really, really well. So like the, the easy approach, I guess, for people on Amazon trying to launch like a real product or a company, um, I would always start with Kickstarter. Uh, it's nice for branding. The, the PR that you'll get, like the media, will all link your product and then you're going to rank organically like even better on Google mm -hmm. uh, because Kickstarter is so highly favored. Right. Um, so any like search term that you put in, let's say you're launching um, uh, like a unique bath mat, like a vegan bath mat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gluten free bath mat. Glu gluten free bath mat, right? Like you like prior to like launching, you have all these like key phrases that you can place all throughout your Kickstarter page. Right. And then you'll rank on Google for that. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. So let me ask you this, if someone does Kickstarter, because Amazon is more like a search engine for products, yeah. it's, it's can Kickstarter, is that kind of similar as well in that sense? Or I type in like vegan bath mat and then it's like, there's a hundred. No, it, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. No, okay. um, no. Okay. Yeah. Cool, man. So right now you're actually trying to sell the company, I think. Is that right? Yes. PMW. Uh, PMW will probably sell them next year. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And that'll, that'll be, be the first, first one you sold. sold. Yeah. That'll be the first, uh, First exit. That's cool, man. Um, I saw with Essie. Yeah. That's your baby right that's, now. That's, that's the baby. That's the that's the unicorn. Yeah. What's what's the goal for Vessi? Let's throw a number up there. Big goals. Big goals. Uh, I don't know if I want to say that. Okay. Yeah. It's uh it's big. It's very big because they really have something that's well it's patented so no one else can do what they do which mm -hmm. is awesome. So for, I mean for those people that don't know what Vessi is like. What, uh, I mean, you're wearing them right now. Yeah, so I'm wearing these shoes. Um, this is a uh, version two, right? I guess. Uh, this is called the Ever. No, what is this one called? It's, it's so new, new that I don't have names. <laughs> Still trying to name it. Um, the material is very unique. So this is a uh, here, I'll show you. Basically, it's, this is 100% waterproof, yeah. breathable at the same time. Yeah. And uh, in this new version, we, we made it extremely stretchy. Uh, but it retains its shape. Right. Show so. them how. Show them how stretchy. Oh, well, do it this way. Yeah. So it's like super, super stretchy, S super light. That's yeah. very, very. It's like doesn't. I don't know. You don't. You feel like you're wearing slippers or something. They they basically feel like socks, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. New to this, like we we developed a new type of inner lining as well. Mm -hmm. uh, this inner lining has like micro air pockets that regulate your foot's temperature. So you can actually wear this shoe in like the summer and it'll keep your feet cool inside. Right. Um, it's like it basically it's a dual climate layer, which yeah. no one has. Um, right. And then if you wear it in the winter time, it keeps your feet warm. 
So if you were, because I saw Samer mm -hmm. uh, wearing that in Montreal, which is oh in the snow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying that even if he just wears like a very thin layer of sock, you were in like Montreal right now, which is like negative 15, 20. Your feet. Your feet would get a little bit colder. Okay, that's too um, extreme. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but it's like regular wear. Um, yeah, it'll keep your feet warmer in the in the winter. Like when I say warmer, it's like it'll be warmer than your boot. It will be warmer. Than it'll be warmer than this. Wow. Okay. Um, or it'll be warmer than your regular sneaker. Right. 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 Um, okay. So good thing about this is like, basically you can wear this for for four seasons. Mm -hmm. um, one shoe that. Yeah, it's not a pitch. It's not a pitch. I'm just kidding. Yeah. One shoe for the entire <laughs> like yeah. So they're launching on Monday, by the way. I hope hopefully this video can go out by then. Um, but definitely check them out. Um, and I'll I'll put the links down below and uh, back them, support them, and. It's also going to be on the podcast. And uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so we're, we're actually, we're here in the office prepping for the Monday launch. Yeah. Um, just making sure everything's like set before we go and yeah. then should have a decent day. Nice, nice. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. On it. Um, with, I, I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about like branding and marketing and like psychology because like we kind of talked about this sure. between ourselves and it's like, both of us agree the fact that it's not even have much to do with the product. It's yeah. like the story that you create. Yeah, the story is, I think, always the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think even on Amazon, it's like, well, why would I buy this product over the other product, right? Um, I think a lot to do with that is like product imagery. Uh, just a lot of people have really shitty images. Yeah. I don't want to buy that. Yeah. Um, like you have to show it, you have to highlight your product in a way where people understand the use case for it, like almost immediately and not by reading like a bunch of text. Yeah. Right. So if you can understand something visually within the first like second, then, then you've done your job, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like invest, like I get so frustrated at people when they don't do this, they take, I still see some photos with iPhones yeah. taken on Amazon. It's like, yeah. like what, like, would you really buy this yourself? Like, why would someone buy, give me one reason why someone would buy this over another one, like over your competitors. If, if I don't think you can name, like, if you can name at least one, like obviously the more the better, like you're screwed. Yeah, no, it's just really understanding like what you're, what you're selling. Yeah, but back to the story though. Yeah, so story is, uh, is the most important thing uh, in my mind. It's, it's like, at the end of the day, like you market to someone's brain, right? Um, and it's their brain that like fires off all these neurons, right? And, and creates serotonin uh, that help you feel good or, or bad about yourself, right? Um, so you need to hit like up here. And the easiest way to do that is like trigger some form of emotion. Um, and you can trigger emotion through like imagery really quickly. I mean, there's the five senses, right? Feel, touch, uh, smell. Yeah. Uh, C and something else. Anyway, I only have four. So. <laughs> yeah, but if, yeah, if you can create like almost a form of like cognitive disconnect mm. of like what's normal, mm. uh, people and like you basically open up their subconscious and it's like, oh, like what is this? And they start paying a little bit more attention. Mm -hmm. And then you, you feed that with like another message, which is like waterproof. So like for us, these waterproof, or like say our backpacks, no one like normally puts a backpack in the water, right? So that, right. like just visually, that looks like- WTF. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and then people click and they, they, they get intrigued, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can always build the story around that. Um, story is really important because like it, the, the more understanding you have of that story, um, basically like the, the more neural branches that you build in someone's mind. Um, what we're using, like, I guess as an example, it's, it's like when, when you look at Lululemon, it's not, Lululemon is not, uh, they're not really selling you a product, but they're more selling you the lifestyle of yoga, yeah. right? How you feel when you wear it, like, like that's why the people are buying the clothes, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, clothes are good, uh, adds to a part, but like, it's the story behind it, right? Yeah. It's like, defines who you are. Yeah, totally. What's like another brand that does this really well, would you say? Um, I mean, Lululemon is a great example. I mean. It's freaking black sweatpants. By the way, um, Chip Wilson, the CEO of, is he still CEO? No, he, he no. no. Well, the founder, right? Yeah. 
he uh, just released the book on Amazon. Definitely check that out. I think I'll be, I haven't read it yet, but it's definitely. good. It's a good book. Yeah. yeah. What what what, did, what was he doing before Blue Lemon? It's called like West. He's doing West Beach. Oh, uh, West Beach. Which is like a skate and snowboard company. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Interesting. It's a good book. He he reads it himself on the uh, audio book. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Sweet. Now he has a lot of time. He's like, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of time. Yeah. He's got routine. Yeah, that's cool. He's from Vancouver too, so that's kind of cool. Dude, what, I last night I watched the documentary, and I will highly, highly recommend you watching it mm -hmm. because yeah. it's really brought And I recommend everybody in the office watching it, actually. It's called Sacrifice Okay. on Netflix. It's by this guy, Darren. He's a uh, illusionist out of the UK. He's been practicing this thing for like 20, 30, 40 years. And he basically created this documentary on Netflix. It was Netflix original. It was only 45, 45 minute long. But based, long story short, um, he made someone who's a little bit racist. Mm -hmm. Like he's like an American dude. You know, uh, he, he's a little bit racist. Oh, he's a hypnotist. Was that yeah, it? he's a hypnotist, an illusionist, whatever. He made someone, and this is a, uh, like a real life documentary um, behind the cameras and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, he made that person take at the end of the show taking a bullet for someone who is an immigrant in america because at the beginning of the show uh the subject we'll call him the subject right the 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 person that's a little bit racist uh he openly said he's like i hate immigrants it's like they're taking my jobs they're taking my, they're screwing up my country i don't like them and then by the end of this like i think it was like an eight months experience uh, uh experiment it was a very mm -hmm. long experiment by the end he took a bullet it's crazy. for a immigrant. And throughout this whole entire thing, it was about classical conditioning and a lot of psychological triggers. Mm -hmm. He embedded these triggers into this subject's uh, brain and it was just the most craziest thing and you can definitely take a lot of it into market, like leverage that for marketing. Yeah. Watch that tonight, and I promise you, you'll be like sacrifice. Okay. Sacri I'll, I'll send it to you after. It's and you guys should, everybody should watch it. It was freaking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think like like the hypnotists, like what they're actually doing is like they they open up your subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. Your subconscious is like the the raw you. It's mm -hmm. like it's who you really are. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this conscious mind that like processes a lot of stuff, and then at night or you know, it it takes. The information that it needs and it feeds it back into the subconscious and it stores it there mm. um so what what a hypnotist like can do is like they can just feed information directly into your subconscious mind right change the way you like perceive things yeah dude we should hire a hypnotist for marketing there are people like that yeah they there there's like econ. there's business <laughs> hypnotists it's like create me a facial guy yeah. <laughs> and people are like hypnotized <laughs> yo actually that's a good idea hey I feel like, yeah. That's a really good idea. Maybe we should call a few. Like, those, those guys are good at understanding the mind. Yeah, 100%. At the end of the day, like, yeah, marketing is all about that, mm. that mind. Um, and, and this, yeah, the story, the feeling that people have uh, tied to your, your brand. Mm. If, you, if you come up with, uh, going back to like a Lululemon example, right? If you have a new brand and you can attach yourselves to um, a lifestyle that, is generally happy. Mm -hmm. uh, your brand doesn't have to work so hard to create those like neural roots in right. someone's mind, right? right? So now, if you can properly attach yourself to say um, yoga, mm -hmm. like what Lululemon did, mm -hmm. now it's a, trigger. it's a trigger. The Lululemon, those pants are the trigger for that feeling that you get when you're when you're doing yoga, like performing or anything like with that lifestyle. Right. I hope I understand. I hope everybody's understanding this point about triggers. And this is actually a book that both of you and I read. Um, uh, Contagious. Contagious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Contagious. They talk about triggers. Basically, just actually, I actually haven't read that. Oh, you haven't read no, it? No, I haven't read it. Oh, I thought, I thought you no, read it. No, I, I should read it, though. Yeah. It's a really, really interesting book. And for example, one of the things was uh, said was uh, Mars bars. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Mars bars, right? Uh, one year their sales increased by like 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, whatever it was. It was a massive increase. Mm -hmm. They didn't change anything in their marketing at all. And this was like back in the 19 something. Right. Right. And then like went to the moon. right? Yeah, they went to the moon. Okay. They went to Mars or something like there was a huge thing about Mars. 
maybe they didn't go to Mars. Maybe like there was a project finally getting developed to go to Mars right. or something like that. But then people started tra- like associating Mars because it's everywhere on news with Mars bars, which absolutely have nothing to do with it. Yeah. And next time they go to like a 7-Eleven or somewhere, <laughs> they're like, oh, like, should I get sneakers or Mars bars? Because they've seen it so much in the news, they just picked the Mars bars. Yeah. So if you can pick, if you can attach your brand to either a feeling or another brand or maybe not, maybe not another brand, but like a lifestyle kind of I thing. I think a lifestyle is the, the key. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so there's a company called uh, Noble. It's like okay. N-O-B-U-L. Okay. And they're a CrossFit brand. Okay. I mean, they, they just market directly to like CrossFit people, right? And yeah. their products reflect like how you feel when you are CrossFitting. Is that the right word? Yeah. CrossFitting? Sure. Yeah. I'm just putting more uh, parking in my meter or oh. meter yeah. in my parking. But yeah, just, just being able to like attach yourselves to something that has more roots in, in someone's mind, right? Right. That's good. Yeah, because like certain brands doesn't mean anything to anybody. Yeah, a, a product is just a product unless it has like um, a meaning, I guess, association to a DJ. Yeah, yeah. It's like how much do you value um, uh, like your fork that you eat with, right? Versus um, the pan that you cook with, right? If if say like you want to like introduce a new brand, which is a, a pan, like you can tap in directly to like that entire market of like cooking really good food, right? And the lifestyle you're trying to pitch. Right, like the last time you had people over, you guys had a good time, you guys had a good dinner. Yeah, they're not really selling the pan. The pan has some features. Yeah. But like, you're really selling that experience that comes with the pan. Right, um, yeah. Or so you like, can even do that with a fork too, you know, it's like. Right, so like, let's say if we know who our target market is, mm-hmm. right, let's say back to that pan example, where our target market are obviously people that cook at home. Yeah, and they probably like. What are some of the happy moments that they've endured? Like, uh, what what are some of the happy moments came from cooking? Like those memories. Yeah. Maybe it was cooking for Thanksgiving dinner. Maybe it was cooking Christmas. Maybe it was like a birthday party. Mm-hmm. Right. But what do you? What are your thoughts with regards to like? So those are the happy thoughts, right? Which is an emotion. But what about like sad? What about other thoughts? Like whether it's like angry or there's many yeah. many other yeah. emotions out there. Yeah, it's like the whole new straw campaign. It's like you show a really cute photo of a turtle with a straw in its nose, mm. and suddenly you can start this entire movement where it's like ban plastic straws. Right, Coney 2012. Like, what was that about again? Coney 2012. Remember, remember Coney? C O N Y. I don't. He like started that. this viral thing about like these kids in Africa or something. Oh yeah, Af- Af- Africa is like a great way to like trigger some. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just I would just like leverage those like emotion leverage the emotions yeah um and you can find certain things that have already like a lot of like emotions attached to it yeah yeah so but i guess my question was more about like for example right that straw example yeah like banned plastic straws so you see a turtle and it's like sad you see the ocean you know the whales like with like nets and stuff like plastic yeah. and they're yeah. dying so that's like sad and like someone's in out like like oh that sucks that's very different than happy yeah but they're using that as a tool to like elicit a like mm-hmm. their response was to bl- ban plastic straws right 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 okay. Um, okay i think that method is much more effective than than uh that's the only appropriate method, really. I, in think, that I think that is, yeah. Because their end goal, their end goal is about like, like what's their unique feature? Is, yeah. For, for banning plastic straws? Yeah, for banning, that's the, the goal, right? That's the... Yeah, their goal is to ban plastic straws, but they use like a, a really, like people like can relate to turtles because Finding Nemo and... Just like, <laughs> yeah. These things are cute, right? Yeah. So um, it's much more effective that yeah. way. Um, yeah, you never see like a squid or like a crab. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to be as effective because you don't care as much about yeah. a squid. So without telling people my brand, obviously you know my brand, and uh, that's the thing with Amazon. I fucking hate it. <laughs> it's like, oh shh, shh. Yeah. Don't tell other people what my brand is. <laughs> so I'm coming out of the. I'm coming. In, I'm coming soon. <laughs> it's, I'm gonna be like, yo, this is my brand. I just need to do well on Shopify first. You know my brand. Um, like, what are some advice? Like, so I'm in beauty. Um, yeah. What, okay. what would you What would you say? My. I, uh, I think like um, within that like health and beauty space, like you are selling 
wellness, right? Like you sell the lifestyle that comes with using these products, right? Mm -hmm. Your brand should make that person feel a certain. So what are some examples? Because the, like the, of the, a lifestyle you can attach to? Yeah, like the fork, the fork, that, the fork example would talk about happiness in Christmas, cooking in front of a family. Like we all experience that. Right. But like what's some, that's the thing, man. It's like you and me, we're, we're dudes. Like we don't, yeah. like, it's very different than women. Yeah, right? I, don't, I don't really understand that part, but yeah. I would think like, well, I guess you have to understand your customer, yeah. right? Yeah. And what do they care about? Yeah, Instagram followers. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe it is that, you know? Yeah, that's, I think that's the biggest disconnect that I have. It's like, I don't know my customers. I can't connect with them. You know what I mean? With Vessi, there's male and female. With my products, it's like 99.9% .9 female. Yeah. So I really need to push, you know, my partner, Christina, to like really understand who our customers are and stuff like that. But cool, yeah. man. So like, uh, sell the experience, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't sell the product, sell the experience. Sell, sell, the, sell the experience. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Any, um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll cut this. I, I, I got to run to uh, San okay. Francisco for this birthday party. Um, what's, uh, let's, let's finish this maybe with two more questions. Sure. One is, um, like, you've come a long way from day one, mm -hmm. right? You didn't know anything back then mm -hmm. from doing business. It was like a huge learning process, and you're still learning every single day. The more you learn, the less you know, I feel like. Like what's, uh, what are some advice, maybe one piece of advice that you give to someone who's like, you know, just want to be like Tony or something. <laughs> they want to be, they want to have their own like e-commerce brand. I think you something, just got Something deeper than like, just do it. You just know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like. I mean, it does really just come down to that. Starting is always good, right? Um, starting anything and just learning through that whole process. But I think it would be to if I was to go back and like do things differently, tell myself back in like 2013 when I started like how to do it, it, it would be to like find someone who has done it. Yeah, totally, 100%. And just like, reach out to them. Yeah. Like cancer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like just like you, you need to learn from people who have already done that process. Mm. Um, so you're not struggling all the way through. Mm. And you can like really skip a lot of, not skip the steps. Just like shortcut. Um, but yeah, it's like you're trying to walk to your next destination, right? Yeah. But along the way, there's like a bunch of potholes and like different turns that you probably shouldn't take. Yeah. But they're all there to dis distract you, right? Yeah. You have the one guy to come in and if he's done it, he knows the path. Yeah. He can point out the potholes. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you're gonna, you're still gonna learn, but you're not gonna have to like <laughs> step into that pothole, trip, yeah. hit your face and then you know, get up and try and do it again. Yeah, and most people just quit at that time. Yeah. So like, it's, so, it's not easy. Uh, but, but persistence, right? Yeah. The person that's going to help you is, I, I mean, like, you love helping people. Like, I like helping people as well. Yeah. Um, just kind of that whole, like, that whole cycle, you know? It's yeah. like, we've done it before. We see the struggles. We get to this point, and then it's like, okay, well, yeah, I'll help you out. Um, show you, show you like the faults, or maybe like just point you in the right direction, right? Yeah. So I'll I leave, think I'll leave Tony's uh, phone number in the uh, <laughs> section below. You guys can give him. A <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's why we helped like people for for um, the Kickstarter campaigns. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the way through. So yeah, that's cool. Anyway, uh, if you're listening to it on the podcast, if you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, um, I don't know where else this will be. Uh, I hope you guys found that useful. And uh, make sure you guys take action. I think that's what kind of Tony and I said, whether that's finding a mentor, finding someone who's been there and done that. And if you guys are learning, if you guys are interested in learning more about Kickstarter itself, let us know. Uh, I don't think there are any courses out there, any sort of paid information about Kickstarter. I don't know. Do you know any? I, I don't know of any. Um, no, I think it would have helped a lot. Yeah, Udemy like, doesn't count, by the way. Uh, uh, yeah, it would have helped a lot. To get going i think the thing with that is like there's a lot of like if you do well on kickstarter they've really grown a company right so that company requires a lot more attention yeah to, and to divert and start like creating the right content and showing yeah. how every how everything works yeah. it takes it's a long process right yeah um to actually deliver real like quality content yeah yeah but I think we can. I think we can do it, though. I think. I think we can. I mean, it doesn't have to be like. I don't know. We'll. We'll. We'll talk about it. I yeah. think. I, I've asked people about. Hey, like, are you guys interested in some sort of a Kickstarter course or right. anything like that? Because I, I haven't seen anything like it. And actually, before talking to you today, I, 
new of Kickstarter, but I learned a lot. And it does, it does seem very systematic now. It does seem like A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. right? Build a list, drive as much traffic, you know, week one, um, keep driving traffic, mark, hire the marketing agency or whatever. So it's interesting. Um, okay, cool. We'll cut this interview now. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Let us know in the comment section or podcast, whatever you guys are watching this, Facebook. Uh, let us know your thoughts. And if you guys want to connect with Tony, what, uh, he's kind of a... No. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no connection. You gotta... <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Savage. Yeah, I'll give it to Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, uh, just, just talk to me. <laughs> yeah, okay, sounds good, guys. Appreciate you guys watching, listening, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.